Hi, thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna run you through another quick batch of paper grit. I'm Angel, by the way, and uh, this is the Foo Dog Mega Sculpture. Over there is the Head Hut Mega Sculpture. I wrote a book about it, built it. You can find that on Amazon. There should be a link down there. This is a quick three bucket batch, kind of my minimum batch of paper crate. I'm going to show you. I started with some shredded paper that I got from the local university. It's in ample supply. I live in the city, so um, I encourage you to use what makes the most sense for where you are and what you're doing. For me and what I'm doing, papercrete makes a lot of sense because there's lots of free already shredded paper and this method that I'm doing works well for taking out of town, which I'm about to do for a real quick, about an hour session. It's kind of not kind of, it's very hot, it's 90 degrees and hazy, smoky, so I'm going to minimize uh, the time that I spend out there on the field, but just whittle away at things. I'm taking some water out to water a tree. And so what I have here is some builder's sand, feldspar sp sand. It's got tooth to it is the point. It's not clay sand. And some Portland cement powder. Cut the bag in half to make it more manageable. And some hydrated lime powder. I also cut that bag in half to make it more manageable just to access. It's not nearly as hot. There's some stuff going to the thrift store there. Um, so I use, much like I make pancakes, as I like to say, I keep it pretty uh, unmeasured. I'm a pretty casual, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, casual, um, unmeasuring, a little bit imprecise kind of a person. And... That is yet another reason why I love papercrete. This structure here, the food dog, is about 50 different experimental mixes. Each one of them different. None of them failed. So it's a good demonstration of how uh, much variability tolerance there is to um, papercrete. There's some variability in cement. You may be familiar, but papercrete ups that variability by quite a bit. Also, the lime and the paper helps increase the cure time, which can be a default, but in my case um, is very much an asset because it will allow me to make the hour drive out there in the heat and work out there for another hour or so. And, um, and then I just have to hope that no cows or antelope or horses come knock it down before it's done curing or after for that matter. Anyhow, all a great experiment. I found that it takes me about an hour to schlep three to six buckets. It really depends a lot on how much prep work and, you know, how, how, it, there's a lot of factors that factor into that. But um, again, for one person to manage, I find um, if I'm feeling strong, six buckets is good. Also, it depends on the size of the project you're working on. You can't really do more than um, three rows up max with bottle bricks um, or one row or half a row if you're doing uh, vertical bottle bricks. I have a workshop in progress for learning more about building with bottles. If you're interested in that, do sign up for my newsletter. There should be a link to my website down there as well. Anyhow, uh, back to the paper creep. I'm going to loosely pour a little bit of each of these, around half a gallon. So this is a gallon bucket. A lot of times I just pour like I would with meat and pancakes, but since these are all full, I will... Oh. Uh, my bucket has gotten brittle. This is what happens when you live in the hot desert like me. Anyway, I guess I'm back to porn or I'm going to go get a shovel. So, uh, <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to demonstrate a little bit. See if I can get this to pause and come right back. <laughs> 